The happy Wednesday, tackling week five like Bobby Wagner took down that pink flare carrying protester on Monday Night Football, breaking down tape with Baldy, grit list with Eric Weddle, Will Derwin James, suplexing, is that right? Suplexing? Don't, I'm pretending I know wrestling. I don't. But you know what he did to uh, Travis Kelsey. We've got Eric Weddle on and RJ Ochoa on the NFC East and those Cowboys. Let's go. Los Angeles. Hey, everybody. It's Up and Adams. My name is Kay Adams. Week 5 is upon us. You can tweet the show at Up and Adams Show or Up and Adams? No, at Up and Adams. I actually don't even know. We should put it down somewhere for everybody to do that. We have a packed show. We're talking Cowboys. Dax hanging out with Aaron Judge with Micah Parsons. R.J. Ochoa joining us for that. But right now, we bring in a very special guest off the top, a guy who grinds tape. You know, I'm not a tape grinder. I'm more of a, I read vibes. I look at tweets. I, you know, look at the numbers. I'm a numbers gal. But this gentleman played offensive line uh, for nine seasons. Cowboys, we'll talk about the Colts and the Eagles, which is where we will start from the NFL Network. Brian Baldinger is here. Hey, Kay Adams. It's good to see you, Kay. How are you? Uh, the, the tribe has spoken, my mm -hmm. friend. What is this? Kay, listen, what, what I, I, I'm, I'm in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Uh, the weather is cold and crappy. I just felt like I needed something to bring some sunshine into the world. You know, I felt like a Caribbean vibe this morning. And so I'm here joining you with that sort of vibe. Can you feel it? Does I it come through that? I mean, it's very Survivor season six. Uh, you yeah. know, naked yeah. Richard, the guy who won a million and then had to go to jail for it. Like, I'm feeling the vibes out of Baldy yeah. this morning. And there are so many storylines we got to get to. We're four weeks into the season, but mm -hmm. uh, none bigger than where you finish your career in Philadelphia, not far from where you sit there in Mount Laurel. The Eagles are 4-0. They're undefeated. When you look at the offense and you look at the tape and you see Jalen Hurts and you see Miles Sanders doing his thing going off last week, do you see this team as a legit Super Bowl contender or do they still have something to prove to you? Well, it's still early, but yes, they can compete with anybody right now uh, because they're, they're, they're well built. Okay. They, their offensive line is as good as anybody in football. They've been healthy, reasonably healthy, lost Jordan Malata last week, but the backup came in, played good. Uh, so it starts up front and then Jalen is just, you know, I mean, people are finding this out now, but like, this is just a committed um, leader that wants to be great, wants to be coached hard, wants to uh, maximize his potential. And they've surrounded him, to the Eagles' credit, with the best talent that they've had in a long time around the quarterback. And so he is doing his part. And they are – they spotted Jacksonville in a monsoon on Sunday, 14 points K, and they scored 29 straight. Mm. And really, Jacksonville was pretty helpless to stop him at that point. Yeah, so – Jalen Hurts, is he that guy, though? Because, you know, my eye test, he is that guy. And the numbers are telling me the story as well. But what specifically is popping off the tape? Decision-making. Decision-making is really, really strong. Um, he, there's times when he does run, and he's as good as anybody back there doing it. Now, maybe Lamar could be, you know, a front runner in that department. But, but he, you know, he, he's making good decisions. And the one thing that you've seen is he really trusts his receiving core, whether it's A.J. Brown, whether it's Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, Dallas Goddard, he's really trusting his guys. And there are times when he puts it up for him and lets him go get it. Um, you know, as, as good a deep ball passing quarterback as there is in football right now. So really, and the way he's seeing the field, just think he's seeing the field really, really well. He's, he's not making mistakes right now. Uh, and they're, they're not. And, you know, it is early. The Eagles look great. The Cowboys, they're there. And they had their number last year. Three-game win streak with Cooper Rush. So Dak will be back. How much of a say do you think the Cowboys are going to have in the NFC East race? Well, they look like a really well-coached team right now, okay? And the things really changed when Dak got hurt. Because what they did was smart. They said for Cooper Rush to succeed, we've got to protect him. We'll keep our tight ends in. We'll keep our backs in. We'll give them half field reads. And he's flourished as a result. And I, I feel like they should do the same with Dak. Not that Dak can't, you know, scan the field and see five receivers and find the best one. But I thought, you know, with the rookie left tackle right now and Jason Peters and a young kid playing left guard and some of what they have there, maybe that's not a bad approach. And with that approach, they have gradually run the ball a little bit better each week. So they're getting a little bit better up front. You know, when you're playing young guys on the left side like they were, um, you, you're going you're gonna to see some mistakes being made. 
But this Jake Ferguson, their tight, rookie tight end at Texas A&M, this kid is a great blocker, really good blocker. Pass protection, run blocking. And so I feel like the offense is catching up to what we've seen defensively, which is just lightning fast and full of freak athletes. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk to R.J. Ochoa about it. I mean, I don't think Dan Quinn, enjoy him while you have him. He's going to have his pick of the litter uh, along with the defensive coordinator for San Francisco as far as head coaching is concerned next year. And let's go to San Francisco here. Jimmy G., Everyone's so critical. His own fans are critical of this guy. So I naturally defend him. Like he's a little lamb that I want to protect. He wins. And here's how I see it. He wasn't getting first team reps. He had a shoulder injury. He barely had a training camp. No preseason. Should Niners fans be patient and will it get better every week? Or is it right to be concerned that he is that one thing that's going to hold them back? Look, they just whipped the world champions on Monday night for us to watch. I mean, this is, Jimmy understands right now, and I think Kyle does too, that this defense is the best defense in football. And really nobody's close right now. Nobody plays defense like the 49ers. Nobody has like the thump that they have. Nobody has the front line that they have. Nobody has the speed, the overall team speed that they have. And so it, they're just hard to score against. So Jimmy's job right now is to move the team, control the ball, as they develop a bunch of young guys up front on the offensive line, you got to factor that in and not make critical mistakes. And he has avoided that. And so yeah. two and a half games of playing right now, uh, or a little bit more than that, like he's right where he needs to be. And it's not easy playing quarterback, K okay, with no work, no off season, it's true. you know, getting to know these new guys up front. Like it's not easy. It's you're going against Aaron Donald and, you know, Bobby Wagner and those guys. It's that's not easy. He played a great game the other night. What was your favorite immunity challenge in your time on Survivor? <laughs> well, uh, you know, just water, fresh water, Kay. You know, I mean, it's, it, it always starts with water. You got to hydrate yourself yeah. in those heat in the jungles. I could eat all the bugs. The bugs didn't bother what, me. What was your favorite bug that you ate? Uh, I think just, just those, uh, you know, when you look at like a grasshopper, okay. like they're difficult to catch. But they're like a huge source of protein. Satisfying. So, I would like, want something squishy. I need something that's like a gummy bear. No, but you see the shirt I have like on right now. I, I would go camouflage, straight camouflage to capture those grasshoppers. Do they think that it was something like, yeah. like, uh, like some kind of fauna? Yeah. Like they would land on top of me. <laughs> we'll yeah. get we'll, fauna, flora, fauna. We'll get to uh, the adventures, the wild adventures of Brian Baldinger in a second, but not until we get to the wild stat line of Kenny Pickett, right? He throws, this is a big storyline, he throws three interceptions, yeah. but we also saw some good things. So what does the tape say in your evaluation of Kenny Pickett? Well, it's a, you know, it's a limited supply. I mean, 13 passes that he had, two rushing touchdowns. Can't forget those. Um, he had one long scoring drive, Kay. And the thing that you see, you saw it in preseason. Maybe it's because he started 49 games at Pitt. But he sees the field really well. And he gives all of his guys, including a budding star, and George Pickens a chance. Like that throw that got intercepted to Chase Claypool, his first pass got intercepted. Um, that's the right throw. Like he's trusting Claypool to go out jump LaMarcus Joyner, mm -hmm. who he's six inches taller then, and he didn't do it, but he gave him a chance to do it. So you got to live with that. You're going to have to live with some mistakes and maybe some forced throws, but he's going to give his receivers, Fryermuth, Claypool, Deontay, uh, Pickens, he's going to give those guys a chance to win, and that's what they need. They, they're they a 17-point offense right now. It's not good enough because they're not a great defense right now. they got to score in the 20s, and he's going to give them a chance to do that. They haven't been a great defense in a long time. I think it's everyone. It's a very lazy take that they've. I mean, they have great players. They've got superstars in certain positions. But even with T.J. Watt last year, they were not one of the better defenses in the National Football League. So he's got a lot against him and a big learning curve ahead of him to turn it around and land Mike Tomlin that winning season. Uh, yeah, you enjoy whatever you're. you're <laughs> Baldy, you are a wild ride, my friend. You are why you are a you're an animal. Is that, is that uh, <laughs> prohibited on your show? Kate? No, like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you are. What you're 
doing, but I just love, I, you're a rebel, you're amazing, you're just doing what you, whatever the hell you want. Uh, okay, uh, not, let's talk about the bugs, right? The, the bread and butter, uh, the specific offensive line question here for you, that's why you're here, uh, or, or the thing that I, I ask you about most, because I don't know how to break down offensive lines, but the Bengals. It, you're invited to come into the film room, Kate. If you, want, if you want to learn, and we, we can sit down, just bring a couple Red Bulls with you. We'll be here for hours. A couple Red yeah. Bulls with me. All yeah, right. Get the that's, toothpicks for the eyelids. That's we'll, the key. we'll show you some stuff. That's the key. Great. I love that. Well, I, I, the thing I would ask you about if I was in that film room would be the Bengals because it's it's the most talked about offensive line by far this season. Struggling early. I'd like to know why. And I'd also like to know if you think they turned a corner last week against the Dolphins because it looked like they did. Mm. I don't know if they turned a corner. They have done some things differently, Kay. Uh, you know, Joe Burrow won a national championship at LSU mm -hmm. because of his ability to put five great players out in a route and make, like, split decisions, like, lickety split decisions. Um, like, just scanning the field like a Ginsu knife. Like, he's, like he's so fast in his reads. And they, he likes to do that in Cincinnati, too. But if Lyle Collins is struggling or... You know, the rookie left guard, Volson, is struggling. Like, that breaks down like it did against Dallas, and they look awful. And I think the last couple of weeks in these wins, um, they've kind of packed it in a little bit. Backs are chipping. Okay. Tight ends are staying in. They're giving a little bit more protection. Um, and so I think that's helped. And then I think he's gotten rid of the ball quicker. Like, he'll take his deep shot to Jamar like he did on Thursday night against Miami. He'll take that shot when it's there. But he's not going to force it, so he's taking kind of what they're giving him a little bit more. So I think it's a little bit of everything. A little coaching, a little strategy. Like, let's protect these guys up front a little bit. Maybe they're not all pros, like the way we paid them to be. Right. So let's let's give those guys a chance. I do think you mentioned the tight ends. Hayden Hurst is a huge bright spot. You know, he's you know, real clutch on third down. We all love C.J. Uzama, but Hayden Hurst, a lot of questions about him. What a bright spot he's been in the midst of some of this uh, dysfunction that's going on with that Bengals offense. Okay, enough about football. Who cares, right? Nobody, nobody breaks down as much film as you do and as passionately as you do. Your other passion, my friend, outside of dressing like a contestant on Survivor for Halloween uh, on a random Wednesday on Up and Adams, but you like to travel the world. I know Oh, you like to visit beautiful, exotic, sort of off-the-path locations. So I would like to do a baldy breakdown of the following. What my producers, I tasked them, and they found. This is you scuba diving with sharks. You'll never find me doing it, but baldy, baldy breakdown this. Well, I mean, look at how shallow the water is. I mean, you know, warm, shallow water is right off the coast of my house in Fort Lauderdale there. We're just, like, I'll diving in those corals right there. You know, I'm in the water every day. So I'll be in there tomorrow at some point. What but are you yeah, I'm just I'm searching. Like those nurse sharks bury themselves in those coral holes right there. And like, you know, nurse sharks are one of the few sharks. There's 500 different species of sharks, okay, as you know. But, you know, there's only a few sh sharks that don't have to keep swimming in order to breathe. And the nurse shark is one of those. And so they don't have big teeth. You know, they're not gnarly. And they're kind of like little puppies. You know, like you want to go pet a puppy. That's kind of like what nurse sharks are like. W who's filming this? Uh, probably, I don't know, like one of my friends, my nephew. You know, it could be any assortment of different people. I like that there. it's frozen back there. Is it frozen on this shot? Because I kind of enjoy it. Looks, it. This, yeah. this, I'm I holding my this, breath that long, Kay. This needs I'm to just... be Conrad Company's new backdrop. Uh, my producer, when you bring him <laughs> on, we need to have Baldy here. So this is out. This is humble brag outside of your house where you're practicing for a survivor uh, in the coral reefs where you are, you are actively looking for nurse sharks, which is about the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But let's do another Baldy breakdown here on spear fishing. Can we get the spear yes. fishing tape? Oh my God, that's a shark! <laughs> you idiot, what are you doing? I mean, like, look, you can't have any fear, okay? Like, you know, you, you, if you just hit them in the snout, if they come after you, they're gonna swim away. Like, you just, like, you just have to get rid of the fear. Like, they're beautiful creatures and fun to be around. Did you t did you take him out of where he like? I Peter's gonna be after I you poked now. Him. now. I gave him a little poke. You poked the wanted... nurse shark, you idiot! What's happening? Okay, uh, what else do, do we have? Spear fishing. Talk me, talk, to break, break this down for me. Well, I mean, Kay, like I'm working on my breath holding. It's not is where it needs to be. It needs to be up around three minutes. So, you know, once I, I started getting like a minute and a half being able to hold my breath, I figured I could take, you know, the spear gun down there and look for some grouper, maybe some lunch, you know? And so, yeah, like me and my nephew were 
probably on this particular day, probably looking to grab like either some lobsters or some grouper or something like that? Uh, casual. That's what, I mean, I do that every day. I just hop into the Pacific Ocean. This isn't, this isn't, there's nothing. Uh, Fresh fish. There's nothing, okay. there's nothing Jason, fish. Jason Momoa Aquaman about this at all. No, we, this is totally standard procedure. This is, this is the lifestyle, Kay. This is why you grind tape and talk about football so that you can, you know, enjoy yeah. your seasons. Let me ask you a question. Do you travel by yourself sometimes? Mm, not no. usually. I have a group called the Travel Dogs. So, um, you know, some of my friends are married and their wives get sick of them. So they're like, just go with Baldy, man. Go down, go to, you know, go down to Costa Rica, get in the surf, you know, what, go down to Medellin, what Colombia. Wife, what uh, wife in her right mind is telling her husband to go hang out with Baldy in Croatia? There's a trust factor there, Kay. There's, there's a trust. I would have zero yeah. trust. Are you, are you, is that an actual <laughs> thing? I wouldn't trust you at all. No offense, you're lovely, but I would not. I, uh, Brian, come I'm on. I'm so upset to hear that, Kay. Who are, these, to, who are these wives allowing their husbands on? Are you kidding me? But I have, you know, I've got, I got nieces and nephews that travel. And okay. I got a lot of friends that are, you know, had got did the marriage thing. Then they, they said, that was enough of that. Let's, let's go back to the single life. Okay. Well, that's always, that's a great way to end this. What a bright spot to end this uh, nice interview. Uh, you went to Poland, didn't you? Of course. What did you I think? I took my mother to Poland. What did you think? I loved it. I loved it. I loved, uh, I loved Glasgow. Um. Glasgow. What am I saying? That's okay. Krakow. Yeah. Krakow. I love Krakow. Yeah. Cool. Krakow was good, man. Yeah, I love Krakow. That. I liked Warsaw. I liked. I, I. I really enjoyed it there. Um, Warsaw was like a really. They're, they're rebuilding that city still from the war. Yeah. So it just keeps kind of getting built up and up. But it was just uh, really cool people. Great food. A lot to see. You know, uh, everybody should go to Auschwitz and see. Uh, you know, just okay. what happened back then. Make sure that stuff never happens again, anything like that. Yeah, my, so my, uh, my grandparent, I think I told you, my grandmother and my grandfather lived 30 kilometers from Auschwitz, north of it. So I, I, I many summers, uh, always, we always did a visit there. It was uh, something everybody should see if they're in Europe at all. Yeah. Good call by you. Uh, Brian, we love you. NFL Network's where we see you. Uh, Brian Baldinger is where we follow you on Twitter. You are a sensation and a uh, a strange cat and a weird bird, but but I love you. And maybe you'll, we'll go on a trip together someday. That would be fun. Well, if I see you, like, you know, down there in the jungles of Brazil or whatever, Kay, yeah. like, you know, we'll, 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 we'll talk about whatever, you know, we'll catch up. Yeah, I'll be at the Four Seasons across the way, and you can find <laughs> me when you're ready for some uh, massages. All right, Brian, I'll we'll be in the tree you. fort. I'll we'll just be in the tree <laughs> fort. We'll, we'll meet halfway. You look like you belong in a tree fort. Enjoy. Thank you so much for your breakdowns here on Up and Adams. Baldy hunting for bugs when he's on Survivor, says Mark Orlando. Keep your tweets coming. RJ Ochoa breaking down the Cowboys. Coming up, Eric Weddle on the show. Ooh, Eric Weddle could be on Survivor, too. Take a shot at big prizes, courtesy of GMC and FanDuel, everybody. Answer questions about this week's action on the gridiron. The more you get right, the higher you'll move up the mountain, and the more prizes you could win. Brian, do you think you have a car yet? No. Nope, I don't. I don't have a car yet. It's okay. It's just been a veneer a month and a half. It's fine. Get your picks in for the GMC Sierra Mountain Climber before kickoff for your chance to reach the summit and win a share of $10,000 in prizes. Visit FanDuel.com to enter. Okay, guests on guests. Eric Weddle is on deck. He will be here in a minute. But we got to talk Dallas Cowboys because they are on a heater. Three-game win streak. Cooper Rush leading the way. Didn't see that coming, but I'm here for that storyline. And this week, they get to play the defending Super Bowl champion Rams, who just got crushed by the Niners. So with more on all things Cowboys, we welcome in editor-in-chief of Blogging the Boys, someone who I read a lot of and follow, of course, on social media, SB Nation's home for Dallas Cowboys coverage. RJ Ochoa, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm not Eric Weddle, also not a part of any cast and survivor, just yes. in case anyone's was curious. But you have a cute, you have a cute puppy on your t-shirt. What's that talking about? Look at that. Yeah, uh, my dog, his name is Bear. Um, he's kind of my, my right-hand man. Um, he's, uh, he's wonderful. He loves to be on different podcasts and things like that. But, um, you know, sometimes he's got to go to the backyard. He's got to yeah. mind his manners. Yeah, I would like to see him at some point. So maybe next time you, you come on, I would like to, you know, Aunt Kay would like to have a word. Uh, but he's all over your Instagram and he's adorable. You don't need to, you know, look like, I mean, he, did, you, did you see Bar Brian Baldinger and were you like, what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> Um, so I am a big fan of Survivor, and so he could cut it. Like, he could totally do it. I totally believe in Baldy. Um, we're big fans of him at Blogging the Boys. And so um, when he's not busy um, grinding a lot of Micah Parsons tape, and there's yeah. a lot, obviously, to get to, 
um, yeah, I think you could hang out with pros. RJ, I think we just came up with a, we have to do the NFL survivor and like which contestants and there could be a whole bit for SB Nation and Up and Adams to figure out and have players or people vote on who would actually, so like Eric Weddle versus Baldy would be a good matchup in Survivor. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's always the the politicking involved, which I think they'd probably excel at. Um, and then there's the like team events, you know, when there's still tribes before they get down to the yeah. individual level. Um, so yeah, I think we can definitely figure that out. Um, the, you know, the tribe normally is, yeah. is the group who speaks, but Aunt Kay is the person who has spoken well, in this case. RJ, I got to tell you, I'm always thinking to myself, who's the one person who's still watching Survivor? And I found him, everybody. I found him right here. It's you, RJ Ochoa. All right, last night, uh, history made in Texas. Incredible. Aaron Judge hitting his 60-second home run. He now, now has the most home runs in a single season for the American League. And look who was there. I liked seeing this. We had Dak Prescott. We had Micah Parsons. Here's why this is important and why I'm starting here. Yeah, Dak, Micah, Aaron, the whole bit. RJ, I have interviewed and talked to a lot of NFL players. I've been around these teams, not just one, not just two. And uh, it is a thing that injured players are very lonely, universally, very isolated. It doesn't matter if it's the quarterback or if it's the sixth string, whatever. They are rehabbing. They're away from the team. That's what sucks about being an injury, not just not adding on game day, but you really are removed from that. So I think it says a lot that Dak was there. I think it says a lot Dak was there with Micah, and I think it says a lot about the team, that a team that's perennially under the microscope was enjoying themselves on this night. Am I overblowing that or do you agree? No, I think that's really well said and, and really well read. Uh, Michael Gallup, the, the third leg of that tripod there, who was just injured himself, just came back this past week, caught a touchdown. Um, he's very, very famously close with Dak. In fact, um, after Sunday's win over Washington, Dak shared. Uh, he's pretty reserved when it comes to like his sharing on social media, but, but he did share a photo of he and Michael Gallup hugging on the sideline, said, my guy, things like that. Um, so that's always great to see. And, and, and Dak is somebody who... Um, has been very close with everybody. He's, he's kind of been the exception to that, right? Like there are a lot of great players who aren't necessarily great leaders or, or great bonders with the locker room. That's never been Dak. Dak's uh, the guy who's, who's good at the random games they play in the locker room, the guy who, who knows about everybody's kids or aunts or families hmm. or dogs. Um, and so it, it is, he's also been Mr. DFW, him and Micah Parsons themselves. They're always at Rangers games, always at Stars games, always at Mavericks games. And so um, while it is kind of common, I think, to see this, it is notable to your point about him being there. Uh, a lot of people zoomed in. You can see the, the little brace thing on Dak's oh. thumb still, which was fascinating. Oh, everyone's zooming in on the thumb because that's the thing because McCarthy's saying that he wants to see him practice. Jerry Jones, as always, is chiming in. So you're saying he's at all of these games, Mavs games, et cetera. I ask you, when do I see Dak Prescott at a Cowboys game? You know, um, you know, McCarthy did say he wants to see Dak practice for an entire week. I thought Jerry was was more reserved than he's usually than he usually is. Um, he, he generally loves to kind of um, be a little bit forthcoming with with injuries and, and let people know who's going to be playing. He does two weekly appearances, uh, and so you know, as somebody whose job is to create a lot of Dallas Cowboys content, Jerry's the man um, as far as putting bread on my table. But um, you know, they came out, you know, and kind of were, were forward about it, that he's probably not going to play this week. The Dallas Morning News reported on um, on Tuesday that that's not going to happen. Uh, Will Greer is being assigned to the 53-man roster to back up Cooper Rush. And so it does kind of seem like uh, that could return next week on Sunday night against Philly if they're still undefeated. That would be – the Cowboys games in Philadelphia have been kind of lackluster throughout Dak's career. They, they've been just – you know, we had the Ben DiNucci game, obviously, a few years ago. But right. Dak returning against an undefeated Eagles team would be epic. That would be epic, and in the meantime, Cooper Rush is 4-0, and and he's incredible. But I do think he gets a lot of credit, and some is due to Mike McCarthy. So my take on that is, you know, obviously Cooper's done his thing, and now Gallup is back just in time for Dak, so they should be okay. But, you know, the scrutiny that McCarthy is put under week in, week out, going back to last year, their disastrous 2021 season, you know, I'm not sure there's a, co there's a coach that's taken more heat than McCarthy, and everybody's, you know, Sean Payton is trending on my For You tab all of the time, connecting him to Dallas and all of this. But, you know, everyone thought the wheels would come off when Dak went down and they've done nothing but win since. What's the relationship with McCarthy in the locker room and McCarthy and fans? I, I think the, the locker room really has his back. And I think that that's something that, that is a little bit underappreciated and hmm. undersold. 
Um, there's always somebody. I mean, you mentioned Sean Payton, um, who I remember when he was on your show a few weeks ago, right before the opener, um, gave love to Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore. And so, you you know, I'm, I'm loving like reading into that. Well, where's the love? Actually, didn't give love to Kellen Moore by name. Um, and so it's like, hey, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Do you have your eyes on this offense? But Dan Quinn is another guy. All credit in the world is deserved for Dan Quinn. Uh, but but he's kind of the guy who who is is immune to anything like that. Uh, back to kind of the, the survivor reference. McCarthy gets nothing. I mean, to your point, everybody buried this team, not just after week one, but before then. I mean, they had a very questionable offseason. Um, Jerry openly dangled McCarthy's fate over the offseason. And, and McCarthy kind of clapped back. And, and yeah. that's that's where I think a lot of people do respect him, is that he he will stand up a little bit to the Joneses, a little bit more than his predecessor. Um, he, he went on a show himself and, and, and kind of spoke about his fate. Um, he, he will challenge what Jerry says in his own press conferences and, and say we haven't made any decisions or things like that. He does walk and talk like somebody who has a Super Bowl ring, which is, I think, what they ultimately wanted when they went down this path a few years ago. I just think if we're going to criticize him, and he deserves criticism for a lot of things, we should also give him credit when he's kept the team together in the midst of crisis. I won't leave a bad Yelp review unless I leave a good one. Do you know what I'm saying? So you have there has to be balance there, and it's just not fair to McCarthy. And, you know, Dan Quinn enters the chat. Enjoy him for the next couple of weeks while you have him because, you know, he's gone. He'll be a head coach because of Micah Parsons, how dominant he is, of course. He might be the most dominant guy on the field this weekend, you know, and you've got Aaron Donald on the other side, and I mean that. Uh, and Trayvon Diggs, who's unheralded, he's never in the conversation of these freaking corners who are great for whatever reason. He doesn't get the love. He had a, allowed a zero passer rating last week. I ask you, how does this defense match up against a, a sort of weird focused on Cooper Cup offense in the Rams for week five? I mean, I think that's it. I think it's this is maybe, you know, it's an afternoon game. It's Fox's number one game of the week. Um, so this is Trayvon's time to shine, right? Trayvon, you know, goes into L.A., locks down Cooper Cup after he had like four million catches on Monday night. That's maybe his, his kind of like national glow up. I like that. Um, and, and that's, you know, and, and if Micah, you know, obviously not out dueling Aaron Donald one on one, but outperforms him, if this Cowboys defense just kind of flexes their muscle again, um, you know, a lot of people attribute the Rams being in Los Angeles to Jerry Jones. The Cowboys haven't really had like a landmark moment in L.A. since that happened. Dak's first game ever what was a preseason game in L.A. Uh, when, when Tony Romo was coming back from injury and, and he did play well. Um, and, and so you do kind of have that fun energy surrounding in this game. But right. yeah, I, I could see Cup having like, four catches for like 38 yards and then that being what propels Diggs into top corner stratosphere. And I want that for him. I really do. Diggs was the mayor of Shutdown City, according to our very own Darius Butler. We want him to get that national love. It is the Rams and the Cowboys. Eagles undefeated. Giants 3-1. and one. A lot of scrutiny about how the strength of schedule has not been great for either of them. Watch out for those Cowboys, especially I know how much you love Michael Gallup. And now I know how much Jack Prescott loves Michael Gallup, so we appreciate you. Editor-in-chief of Blogging the Boys, SB Nation's home for Dallas Cowboys coverage. RJ Ochoa, we appreciate it. Thanks, Kay. Have a good one. Thank you. And then bring your dog next time. Okay, up next, this guy, maybe we'll do a little show and tell of his backdrop where he is in the office. Let's give it. Let's give it. Oh, there he is. Make some noise for Eric Weddle. We're going to go to the grit list. You can't tell me something's going to take Derwin James off that list, Eric. You can't tell me. You can't sell me on it. You can't. Turning it up. Hey, we're fighting the time. It's never been up. I ain't need that with a shot. I'm all of a zone. I'm all in control. I'm all in control. I'm whipping the sauce. I'm out of the car. I'm bringing it home. Turning it up. Turn up. Well, once a week, we get to welcome in our favorite safety, a six-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ, Rams, Chargers, Ravens, legend. We love him. You love him. It's Eric Weddle. Hey, Eric. Hey, what's the word? What's going on? Nothing. You're in a good mood this morning. How did the uh, the drop-off go this morning with the kiddos I'm all, carpooling? I'm, all, I'm always in a good mood. I woke up. Time time to be great and live it up. Kid drop-off was great. Uh you know, same old routine. I Get heard the kids it was, off, and I then heard it was good. record record time. Is that not true? Yeah, Wednesdays my older two have late starts, so th- uh, they're still lounging around. We just gotta get the younger two off, and we rocked it and moving on in the day. We love it, and here we are, and we gotta start. Unfortunately, with the team that got you a Super Bowl ring, those Rams, the defense. <laughs> I don't know what to say. They were lacking. Absent run defense. Debo tearing up the secondary. They couldn't get their hands on Jimmy G. 
The Niners needed 49 plays to beat the Rams 24 to 9. So what's going on and how do they fix it? Well, I think it's a little uh, overblown to say the defense uh, didn't play. All right. At, at, you know, outlandish. Uh, you know, they gave up 17 points. You gave up two big plays. And honestly, you know, obviously they'd want to have a couple plays back. The big play late in the game sticks out. Uh, you know, if you're going to go for a big play like that, uh, you better make it. And if not, then that's what happens. So I, I'm sure uh, Kendrick will learn from that. And you just got to get him down. Debo's a big dude. And uh, you just got to wrap him up. But that's why he's special. And that's why these NFL superstars are who they are. They're, yeah. they're incredible athletes that – uh, get paid a lot of money to be great at what they do. So you live and you learn. I, I thought they played well. Uh, you know, we just it's 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 a, it's a tough time right now. We're battling the O line, the, the the changes on the O line, the injuries, trying to figure out the the dynamic with Allen Robinson and the running game. So I, I just right. think honestly, we just gotta we gotta weather this storm. Uh, honestly, the next few weeks just to get through it and to try to get some continuity on the offense line, try to get some continuity with the skill guys and Stafford. And and we'll be okay. Uh, we'll be okay. The defense is there. Uh, they're going to continue to get better. I wouldn't I wouldn't say the sky has fallen by any Good. means. I like There's to a hear lot, that. A, a lot of positives that came. 49ers are a tough team, and, and obviously the history has shown uh, that our success rate against them is not very high. Yeah. So uh, – you know, but when when it counts, we got it done last year, and, and the, they can always recall that uh, infamous game in the NFC Championship when they need it. The talent is definitely there. I love to hear you saying this. You're talking defense. You're not worried about it. Offense, I, I'll admit, I'm a little worried. I know that you, you know, the elbow thing. We played through pain. No big deal. It's just, you know, the offense. I, they're not performing up to task. It's just Cooper Cup. There's no downfield throws. But you think it's more of a chemistry with Allen Robinson thing? Because there's a lot of questions about Allen Robinson and all that. Make me feel better about this offense. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you just, you got a lot of moving parts and, and things don't just happen overnight. Like as much as everybody on the outside wants it to instantly click, it's just not reality. It, it takes time. It takes experiences. It takes live reps. I mean, the only live reps these guys have gotten together is week one, starting week one. They didn't get any preseason as much as those practices against other teams are live in a sense, they're not. So uh, it's going to be a progress. And, and that's why these first six to eight weeks, we're just trying to figure it out. and just trying to figure out what this team is going to be. How are we going to win games? What is the true identity of the Rams? And then the second half of the year is when we start getting it rolling. Yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too worried. Uh, that's why Sean's the best coach in the league. One of the best. And, it's his job to figure it out and make it work, and I'm sure he's going to do that. I'm sure he's out night and day uh, f trying to figure out the best way to win games, and they'll figure it out. I'm not really worried about it. You, I mean, you clearly aren't, but I want to know a little more about that because I think fans are worried. They're defending Super Bowl champs. It's a big story. Um, you know, it's, It was a huge of game course. everybody saw. So yeah. tell me about Sean McVay in the face of a loss like that to Shanahan. You can, you can convince me of a lot of stuff, Eric, but you're not going to convince me that like that doesn't mean something to him to lose to Shanahan. I know that it does, right? So what is he like this week? Like, What is it about him and how he's going to change this around that makes you so confident? Well, I think I think over the course of his head coaching career, he's dealt with losses in games much harder than he than he does now. And as a leader, as someone that's uh, the face of your organization, uh, the, the, that the players look up to, you have to be consistent at your approach. You have to exude confidence and belief in your players. And at the end of the day, you have to stick with what works and stick with uh, the details and the schedules and everything that has gotten you to this point. There, there's no denying the success that he's had and, and the Rams have over the last six years. So you, you don't change what's gotten you here. You, you, ch you tweak things, right, schematically, maybe okay. scheduling, maybe go pads here and there. But uh, he's going to be confident. He's going to get back to work. He's not going to waver. And he, he's, a, he's a great leader and a great head coach for a reason. We love to hear it. Love to hear it. Uh, you guys can tweet us at Up and Adam Show. Now, you, ever since last week, I've been thinking about the dinner club, right? You told me about <laughs> your fun dinner club uh, and how you guys did it. And so do we have a clip of that, I think? Do we have a clip of that or not? I don't think we do. So I, th I would ask you just this. Which current NFL player, 
based off their week four performance, would you invite to dinner club? Who had a great game in your eyes? Uh, I would just say a great start to the season. Uh, he, he'd probably say it wasn't his best game, but Jalen Hurts, uh, just everything about him just means a guy that you want at dinner club. He works hard. <laughs> he's in the building early. He loves to work out, uh, you know, the playing the quarterback position, the way he's playing it and how much fun the, the Eagles are watching them and, and seeing how innovative they are and how, how much pressure they put on the defense. Like, it's, it's just awesome to see. So I, I bet he would be an awesome addition to Dinner Club. And to think <laughs> of a guy that I would run through a wall for would be him. So I, you could just tell that from his teammates, the organization, the belief in him. And, man, when a guy works and puts football first, look at what happens. And he's a perfect example of that. We love seeing it. So welcome to the dinner club, <laughs> Jalen Hurts. You might have to run that by Andrew Whitworth. I don't know if you can just invite anybody or what the rules are. But listen, Eric Weddle, you know what time it is. Get that beard ready. It is yes. time for Eric Weddle's Let's go. great list. Who you got? Let's look at last week. Top three first. of this past week, we got Kenny Pickett first off. Oh, well. Oh, this is last week. Yeah. You keep messing me up with I, the list. I mean, I know, you get me all hyped up. I got you, Eric. To talk it's about the fault. list of the previous yeah. week. Okay. This was last. This is the ongoing list. Top three: Derwin James, Benny Sco, and Jordan. Uh, you, can, you can say his last name I for got me. You. So then now let's see the new incoming top three of last let's week go. to see if any of them take him out. This Kenny Pickett. I just love how he he takes a shot, stood in the pocket, gets the throw off, takes a mean hit by Williams, and he just gets up, laughs, smiles. Probably is like, man, is that all you got? <laughs> And that's, that's like grit right there. That's like a guy out in the country throwing some hay barrels and then just gets knocked over and gets back up. It's like, hay is barrels. that all you got? Easy. <laughs> I dig we it. Got, uh, we got Justice Hill coming up, running okay. back for the Ravens. Had some great runs early. He bounces this ball outside. And, oh, gosh, we got a cramp. We got an injury. We got hammy something. Ah. But what? He doesn't, he doesn't just fall down. He keeps running on one leg. That nothing's going to stop this guy. Right, I, I just love the fact that he's just not going to bow out. He's going to get the first down. He's going to continue running. He's got good blocking on the perimeter. Uh, hopefully, he's okay. He but, is. He you is. Know, he's grit, okay. Toughness. Uh, oh. Just talk about it. grit. That's that's grit to a T. Just not not bowing out when something yeah. bad happens. The injury is not serious. Yep. Reportedly. All right. Who else we got? Last one. And we got B Wags coming in at the <laughs> at the final spot. <laughs> I just want everyone to know this is a dream come true. <laughs> For a player, <laughs> we always envision ourselves doing this to some weirdo that thinks he can just run on the field and nothing happened. And B Wags gets to fulfill all our dreams as a player to knock this dude out. And it could have been way worse. Like he, he probably, probably went fifty percent on this dude. <laughs> if it was me, I would totally do Water Boy <gasps> Adam Sandler full fledged forty yard sprint and try to knock this dude into a next light. But <laughs> He it's can't. awesome to see. I love it. <laughs> B Wags, thank you for fulfilling all our hopes and dreams. You would go at him 100% Bobby Boucher style. I love <laughs> yes. that. Okay. So, in honor of B Wags and him doing something that we've all <laughs> wished we could have done in our careers, he is my new number one. Whoa! Take, taking out that random fan with that whatever kind of gas thinking it's his his time his his time to shine no it's not it's not about you buddy it's about the rams and niners number two is derwin james still the body slam uh obviously an iconic yes. tackle if we've ever seen it and then kenny pickett i, I put him at three because i love him getting up his reaction hits don't matter i'm a tough guy i'm gonna be here all day Let's see if anyone uh, takes him out next I week. I like it because a lot of people are seeing Kenny Pickett and they're saying, oh, he threw three interceptions and woe is me. But I think you're right. He showed Steelers fans some, a little something. Like the, He showed them something to be excited about. And he's making his first ever career start against those Bills this weekend. Yeah. So a tough one for Kenny Pickett. He'll need a lot of that grit. Okay, so sorry, Duran James, you're done. Because yep. I, thought, I thought NFL players were going to say, you, you should never hit somebody that doesn't have pads on. No, 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 no. What? Yeah, normal civilians, right, out, out and about. Yeah, we, we don't, we don't want to hurt anybody. But some, 
scumbag that wants to try to come on our field, nah, you're, I'm taking you out. And then he's an idiot because he approached the bench. It's like, all right, do what you want to do like a squirrel in the middle of the field, yeah. that's fine. But once you're, you're walking up to Bobby Wagner at that point. I, I saw that clip and I was just, I had, I just smiled and wish <laughs> I was Bobby Wagner right there. And then I could have been that guy to finally do it. But isn't Bobby Wagner like the least, like he's, it's like, he's the least person I would expect to do that. He's so, he's so even kill, like he's soft spoken. He's one of the greatest linebackers I've ever seen. And for him to go out of his way to do that, it just makes me, I mean, he's, he was already up here. Now he just went up another notch in my book. <laughs> and we love seeing it. Okay, short break. Eric Weddle is back with us. We're going to do a little show and tell with Weddle, the bearded one, after this. Do not go anywhere. This is the Up and Adams show. Don't worry about the Rams. I'm just, I'm going to look We're myself good. in the mirror. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. And here we are on Up and Adams, and I didn't know that I learned about nurse sharks being having small, not gnarly teeth who like to live in coral reefs in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, Brian Baldinger, for that information. I also don't get the obsession with football players who are superheroes wearing pads and all of this in their f brute force taking down streakers and stuff on the field. I'll never, I've, I've never thought about it, but Eric Weddle was so passionate about it. And we thank him, of course, for joining the show and preaching patience on the defending Super Bowl champion Rams, which I 80% believe and 20% think he's going to end up a Ram when all is said and done by oh, 2023, by December. But we love him and having him on the show. So, uh, Listen, I am in L.A. I'm new to L.A. Got a little bit of furniture. Don't get too excited. Didn't get a lot of it. But last night, I was offered Muse tickets. And I love Muse. I've seen them several times. It's a great rock band, Matt Bellamy. And so I just tweeted, if I didn't have anybody to go with, and, and anybody that I, I, I just didn't, I, it was, there, nobody was available that I would have wanted to dip in and out to of a concert with. I wasn't staying the whole time. So I said, do you guys think I should go to Muse by myself or go to sleep? And the polarization of this question was staggering to me. And no, everyone said, you, you can't go to a concert by, not everyone, half the people were clowning on me for attending a concert by myself. If you can't go somewhere by yourself, I can't help you. And maybe it's a New York thing or just an independent thing, but I'm, here's my PSA, go to a show by yourself. You're sit, if you're with somebody, you're trying to scream to them, you're not talking to them. It's like going to a movie, you can go to a movie by yourself. I've, I went to Iceland by myself. I have hiked in crazy places around the world by myself. If you can't enjoy some alone you time, I can't help you. You got, you know, and so I was really sort of shocked to see that people were so, go to sleep, go to sleep, don't go to a show by yourself. I went, I met a couple people, some people came and said hi to me, and then I had a lovely time and Muse put on a great show saying a little too much of their new stuff for my liking, but it was still good uh, at the Wiltern Theater. So go to shows by yourself. We'll be back on Up and Adams. Here's my message to you today. FanDuel Casino has a new daily free-to-play game, Reward Machines, a free game that gives players a chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. All you got to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at everyday wins only on FanDuel Casino. All right, headed into week five of the fantasy football season. So you got to preach patience or you got to hit the panic button. You're in, you're out. You're, we got to figure it all out. And that's what we do right here on Up and Adams with a bit of panic room. So here's some players I think you're panicking on based on your tweets and such. Yes, it's very scary. Uh oh, what happened? She was, she was upset about something. She's in the panic room. Okay, so here is the first guy, Aaron Rodgers. Cut and dry, I'm gonna say panic, but don't drop him. Through four weeks, he's the 21st ranked quarterback. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna apologize to everybody because I said, <laughs> he's going 13th, he's not even a QB1, he's gonna be great. And he hasn't been great, he's got three interceptions, not a ton of touchdowns. I do think those numbers improve as he starts and continues to build chemistry with his receivers. You guys heard me talk about this. It, you know, the identity of the offense is going to shift from Jones and Dylan. They're running the ball right now, but it's going to change. That said, don't play him right now. Play the Jared Goffs of the world, the Trevor Lawrences, the Geno Smiths even. Play the matchups week to week until it improves. But you're not going to get anything for dealing Aaron Rodgers. You can't be like, bro, take him off my hands, and you're going to get, like, who are you going to get back for that? Like, Travis Etienne? Don't do it right now. Speaking of running backs, though, another guy the world is panicking about at large is Leonard Fournette, and I get it, but I will say don't panic. Fantasy managers are worried. He carried the ball three times, negative three yards. He couldn't have an uglier stat line than that, and that was against the Chiefs. 
it was a kind of a weird game, right? They, I mean, they fell by double digits early. I still have never seen a stat line like that. They threw and threw and threw and didn't run and run and run at all. Uh, you know, he, yeah, he was in the passing game though. Let's not forget that too, close to 60 yards and his first touchdown of the season was through the air on seven grabs. He's still the 16th highest ranked running back as far as scoring is concerned on the year. And he will start scoring, by the way, more touchdowns as long as this offense gets healthier, and it will. I'm not worried about it. And actually like the matchups, they have Atlanta and they have Pittsburgh coming up. Okay. And hit me up with people at Up and Adam show that you're panicking about. This is just literally me looking at my Twitter feed and seeing who you guys are worried about. Uh, DJ Moore. DJ Moore is a big one here because this is someone who my, I'm always pumping him up. I'm always like, he's gonna get a thousand yards no matter who's throwing him the ball. But he, you know, last year he was averaging like 10 targets a game. He's gotten 29 total targets through week four. And I'm not the only one frustrated about it. He is too. Take a listen. Like, mm, it don't matter to me. Getting open is getting open. Open is one yard, 0.5 yards. Open is open in this league. Like, quarterback, if he doesn't see it that way, it's cool. They go into the next read, next person is open. He's mad, he's not, he wants the ball and he's open and I don't put any of it on DJ, but it's hard to see the numbers picking up with whatever that quarterback situation is. The Panthers ranked dead last in total offense, are now dead last. Baker hasn't really shown me anything as far as you know me trying to make light of this. Now, Moore is really talented. I don't think you drop him, but you can't play him right now unless the offense starts to figure things out. All right, another guy the world is panicking about, the fantasy world, is George. It just looks like we didn't pay our bills at a certain point. Uh, George Kittle, lots of talk about this. He's been back for two weeks. He hasn't gotten more than 30 yards on five targets in a game. I'm going to preach patience here. I would not start panicking yet because we're working his way back into the offense, right? And, you know, as is Jimmy G. We talked about it with Baldy. He didn't have a preseason. He didn't have training camp. He's got a shoulder. Leave, like, leave, leave Jimmy G alone. Leave George Kittle alone here, too. Um, you know, George has never averaged fewer than 65 yards per game in a season. So the Niners run a lot, of course, and he blocks a lot, and people want to knock him for that. But he is simply too good in the passing game to be held back for long. So we can look at splits and we can look at percentages and what he's doing among tight ends. I think it's simply a we, we are not giving Jimmy G the patience he deserves here. It is a bit new. They are running and all of that, but he needs to... Jimmy G needs some comfortability. He didn't get any reps. It was all the Trey Lance show. So give him a break. I don't know why I'm his like safe safe place for Jimmy G. I think it's because stats makes me so mad. Rob Stats Guerrero. All right, that is our show today. Tomorrow, I believe we might have Asante Samuel Jr. on the show. Brandon Marshall, they're calling you my ear, is on the program. So we will see you guys. Enjoy your day. Be safe and go to concerts by yourself.